In the last section, we started putting together our fetch user action creator, which is intended to make a request to our backend API and then somehow communicate to our auth reducer whether or not the user is currently signed in. So in this section, we're going to, again, we're going to be covering some challenging topics here. We're going to talk about Redux Thunk. We are also going to be talking about how to refactor this action creator to use the async await syntax. Now, very likely that this will take two separate sections, but that's totally fine. We'll take our time and make sure we really understand this because again, we're going to be repeating this process several times throughout the course. Now, at this point, I again, am going to assume that you are passingly familiar with action creators. Remember, the purpose of an action creator is to return an action. That action gets sent to all the different reducers inside of our application which then produce new values for state and updates that state inside of our Redux store. The Redux store then sends the newly updated state back to all the different React components. Now the key inside this process is that with vanilla Redux, like Redux as we've installed it with no further configuration, expects that any action creator that we call will instantly and immediately return an action. And remember, we define an action as a JavaScript object with a type property and optionally with a payload as well. So the key thing to remember here is that an action creator always expects us to return an action. So what's Redux Thunk? And what does Redux Thunk have to do with all this stuff? The entire purpose of Redux Thunk is to allow us to write action creators that break this rule right here, that break specifically the requirement that we have to immediately return an action from every action creator we create. So let's take a look at a diagram that's gonna help us understand a little bit more about what Redux Thunk is really doing for us. Okay, so this is essentially the same diagram, but obviously one with one very large change right here, right in the middle. So you can think of this as being essentially what Redux Thunk is giving us access to. I want you to think of this thing as like a big funnel that is just sitting out there waiting for actions to be passed into it. So let's go through this flow and we'll talk about exactly what the funnel is meant to represent. So again, on the very far left hand side, we have our React component. The React component will call an action creator. And then this time, rather than saying returns an action, I said produces an action. So that's what the action creator is really responsible for. The action creator somehow produces an action. The real question is about how the action creator communicates that action back to the Redux store. So this time around, we're saying that the action creator is no longer going to be returning it. Instead, the action creator is going to be passing the action to what we call the dispatch function. The dispatch function is a function that belongs to the Redux store. If we call the dispatch function with an action, the action will be automatically forwarded on to all the different reducers inside the application. And those reducers will run like normal, they will produce a new value for state, and they'll pass all that state back to the store. Now to be 100% clear, this dispatch function is already where this action is being sent to. So in that last diagram we were looking at, just two seconds ago in this one right here, when I had said the action creator returns an action and that is sent to all the reducers, there really is an invisible step right here. So when it says sent to, already that is, we are like looking at what the dispatch function is really doing. The dispatch function's purpose is to send these actions off to the reducers. That step is already happening with Redux whenever we use it. The only thing that Redux Thunk is really doing for us is that it's giving us direct access to the dispatch function. So it says, okay, I understand that in your action creator, you do not want to follow the rules. You do not want to just return an action like usual. Instead, I'm gonna give you direct access to this dispatch function, and then at any time, at any point after doing whatever you want, if you want to manually return, or you want to excuse me, manually dispatch an action, just pass the action to this dispatch function. So again, Redux Thunk is really allowing us to bend the rules here and allowing us to manually dispatch an action at any point in time that we wish from an action creator, rather than requiring us to just flat out return it from the action creator. Again, I can't say it enough, the dispatch function is already really being used behind the scenes right now. So all we really get out of using that Redux thunk, thunk thing is we just get the ability to get a handle directly onto the dispatch function. Okay, so with that in mind, 
we are now going to complete our action creator, at least a kind of first run through with it. And with this first run through, we're going to kind of take a very rough approach. We're going to get everything working, but we're gonna say that this is like V1 or version one. Once we get through version one and we understand how it works, we're then gonna come back and implement version two. And in version two, we're gonna have the real like completed syntax where we use a lot of fancy ES 2017 stuff and all that kind of good stuff, okay? So first time, just, you know, let's get through it, understand what's going on, and then we'll come back and refactor everything. So let's flip on over to our action creator. So remember, usually, how we would usually put this stuff together is we would say something like const request equals the request that we just made, and then we would return an action with a type of something like fetch user, and then on the payload property, property we would have our request like so. So I'm saying that we're no longer going to exactly follow this right here. Instead, we are going to get direct access to the dispatch function. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm not going to immediately return that action. And I'm also not going to assign the request object to anything. We're just gonna let the request hang for just a second. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna refactor this action creator to really use Redux Thunk. Now, when we do this refactor, it'll look a little bit weird, but just bear with me. So I'm going to add in the body of this function right here, I'm going to return a function. And when this function is executed, it's going to make the actual request like so. So now rather than returning an action from this action creator, whenever the action creator gets called, it will instantly return a function. Now here's the key. When we wired up the Redux Thunk middleware, just like two seconds ago inside of our source index.js file, we wired it up as a middleware. The purpose of this middleware, the purpose of Redux Thunk is to inspect whatever value we return from this action creator. If Redux Thunk sees that we return a function instead of a normal action, Redux Thunk will automatically call this function and pass in that dispatch function as an argument. So dispatch right here, this is a function. This is the same function we were just looking at inside this diagram. So it's the thing that we can think of as like a big funnel and anything we toss into it, any action we toss into it will be automatically forwarded off to all the different reducers in our application. And so now that we have access to this dispatch function, we don't have to immediately return an action or anything like that. We don't have to do anything in here. We can say at any given point in time, oh, you know what? I now somewhat feel like dispatching an action, so I guess now I will. And so where is that really relevant for us in this code snippet? Well, we want to dispatch an action after this request has been successfully completed. That's the whole point of all this. We do not want to dispatch an action until this API request has been completed. So we want to treat this thing like an asynchronous little piece of code, because that's what it is. We're going to chain on a dot then statement because axios.get returns a promise. And then once the promise is resolved, only then will we actually dispatch an action and have that be sent off to all of our different reducers. So let's give this a shot. I'm gonna remove the semicolon on the end. I'm gonna chain on the dot then statement the dot then will be called with our response from the API. And so whenever we get that response back, then I am ready to actually dispatch an action. So I will say dispatch, and I'm gonna pass in the action that I want to dispatch. So it'll have a type of fetch user and a payload of the response that we just got back. So payload of res, like so. Okay, so this right here, this is essentially V1 of our code. Whenever the action creator is called, it will return a function. Redux Thunk will see that we returned a function and it will automatically call it with the dispatch. We then make our request. We wait until we get a response back from our API. And then once we have the response, only at that point in time will we actually dispatch our action. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That is our first action creator using both Redux Thunk and using Axios inside of it. Again, we're gonna repeat this process many times. So at this point, we're gonna take a quick break. We're going to wire this action creator up to our application so that it's actually being called. We will then be able to test it out and verify that it's working the way we expect. And then after we are able to verify that it's working as we expect, we're gonna come back to it 
and do that refactor to make it look really nice and pretty, much better than it looks right now, okay? So let's take a quick break. We're gonna come back and wire up the action creator to our actual application.